This is a short video about chamfers, about why we need them and some issues to avoid. Okay, so first off, why do we need chamfers? Well, if you look at this box by itself, you can see that this edge disappears. The light on this surface and the light on that surface produce the same tonal value. We cannot distinguish the two. But if we go and add a chamfer modifier, now we get a nice highlight across that edge. And by adding more resolution to the area, we get a more defined highlight. And that is good because that now differentiates between these two surfaces. So here are a bunch of objects, all with chamfers using different techniques. The problem we are trying to avoid is this one. Here the chamfer creates a gradient of light across something we believe is a flat surface. It looks very ugly and it makes it feel like the surface is in fact curved when it is not. So why do these ones look okay and why is this one broken? That is because the surface normals are pointing in the wrong direction. Because even though the surface looks believable, it is an approximation of a real surface, not actually physically correct. What is the problem? Well, if you we look at this green line, this represents the surface normal. It is placed on a vertex and it is the average of all the adjoining faces. If that surface normal is not perpendicular to the main surface, then light will bend across the surface. So over here in this corner, light's gonna bend off this way, over in this corner, it's gonna bend off that way, and over here, etc. I can correct the light by correcting the surface normal. So in Max, we have a feature called weighted normals, and I believe this exists in Maya and Blender and every other package. So now this normal is weighted, it favors the biggest face. And because the biggest face is this big flat surface, it points the normal perpendicular to this surface and corrects the shading. So bad, good. So for games, this is a great solution because the poly count is very low, the lighting looks correct. If we have a bigger chamfer, then the silhouette starts to break. So we're gonna need some more segments to redefine the silhouette to make it nicer. And you can see that as we add more segments, so from here to here, it appears to cure our light bend problem, but it never quite gets there. You, you can still see the light dimming into that corner over there. And that is because no matter how many edges we add onto this segment, these two faces are never quite going to be parallel. So we're always going to get a average normal which is going to be pointing off in the one direction unless we use a weighted normal to correct it. So that's off and that is on. So as I said, this is a great solution for games. Uh, in production, in film, we tend to use a slightly different solution. Uh, we use a, a flow loop So if I turn edges off, you can see with the flow loop on, our faces are flat, nice flat faces, but with it, with it off, we get this big problem. So on, off. And that is because if we look at the normals, these vertices are being averaged across parallel faces. They produce a nice perpendicular normal which gives us a nice flat piece of shading. So once I've got that shading, I can then, if I'm in production, I can subdivide it and get some nice crisp edges. Quite an expensive solution for games because we've now got several thousand polygons in a box, um, but perfectly good for a production renderer.